Hello, greetings and salutations to all you hardcore MMA fans out there. Welcome to the MMA Recap. And I'm your host, Dan the Wolfman, and unlike your run-of-the-mill Monday morning analyst, I am an actual MMA technical expert with four black belts, and I fought pro including against two UFC light heavyweight contenders. I also color commentated the first five live Pancrase events from Tokyo, Japan, and I've been involved in the sport for almost 22 years, going back to sparring guys like Dan Severn, Tank Abbott, Tito Ortiz, Rampage Jackson. So I've been around uh, forever. So guys, um, today we will be catching you up in case you missed some of the action this weekend. Uh, there wasn't a big UFC event, but we'll be covering the Bellator McFarlane versus Laura matchup uh, event, the card, the main card, and Dana White's Tuesday Night Contender Series was five uh, great finishes, four great finishes on that event, plus the Epic One Championship middleweight title fight between Ang La Nai Song and my former spar sparring partner from Tokyo, Ken Hasegawa. Uh, before we get to all that action, I want to say a genuine happy 4th of July Independence Day to all you guys out there, uh, especially all you military and first responders around the world. Not everybody knows that I was a volunteer fireman and in a former life. Fire 1, Fire 2, Hazmat Certified, got a rifle expert badge, and all kinds of things in the many lifetimes I've tried to squeeze in a just one. Uh, because it's probably the most, probably most watched event, uh, but a lot of people missed the Bellators on Friday night. Um, you know, maybe you had to work. I was, I was uh, bouncing myself, so I catch it later on DVR. Uh, let's cover some Bellator news and then the Bellator events. Uh, biggest news this week is the Lyoto Machida signing by Bellator. Uh, that's a really strong pickup for Bellator. Machida still uh, got enough left, especially at middleweight. Plus, he can match up with with higher weights uh, guys. That it could be very very interesting. There's a lot of good stuff um, that Lyoto Machida could do. Um, I was his sparring partner for three months leading up to the Ryan Bader fight that he got a quick KO of. You know, I was charging in with big overhand rights and looking for the clinch and takedowns and stuff like that. Um, really, who I'm preaching for, and I sent Scott Coker and Rich Chewy this, is I think they should do a Bellator Legends card. Uh, put all the karate and judo guys that can possibly put on um, to like an Origins card. And... Uh, Put Machida, Shotokan, Machida Karan, expert, versus uh, Hisaki Kato, Daido Juko, black belt, like myself, a Daido Juko, which is an offshoot of Kyokushin Karate Judo Boxing, turned into MMA style back in 86, before UFC and Pancrase back in 93. Uh, I fought at two Daido Juko World Championships. Well, Kato, guy known for spinning back fist knockouts and Superman knockouts, um, you know, Kato versus Machida could be very interesting, especially if you put his brother Chinzo Machida, who's already been a Bellator fighter for quite a while, versus Kyoko Shin turned Kenpo Karate expert Katsunori Kikuno. That's what I would do. I would try to get Omigawa Judo expert on the card and some other guys. There's that, uh, can't think of his name right now, SBG. Uh, Straight Blast Jim Ireland, um, guy trains with Connor, very karate-like, you know, uh, you know, training with uh, Nelson and those guys. Um, you to load up that card, do that, it'd be a good first fight for Machida, hopefully, in Bellator, hopefully he would um, get past that, and then take on the winner of Roy McDonald versus champion Gegard Musasi, who's also a highest on black belt. Under Gokar Svichin and Judo Jean the Bell, most people don't know that. That is also one of the black belts I have, which is highly coveted. And um, Gegard versus Rory is very interesting. Gegard versus Rory is going to take place on the same card as Rampage versus Vanderlei Silva 4. Now that should draw a lot of eyeballs, but this will be the first card on Dazen, D A Z N. Um, that is going to be network streaming Bellator fights in the future. Um, they're going to give it away free, and this card is solid enough. Maybe they're hoping to do like the YouTube Red thing with Cobra Kai, like, hey, we'll give you 30 days free, 
people did it. I even did that myself to watch Cobra Kai, and I just unsubscribed right away. I don't know if Thousand could do that, but that's what I did with YouTube Red, is I went in and figured it all out first, made sure I'd be able to do it, looked at multiple videos on it, bam, did that, and, you know, you still get your 30 days. So, um, I don't know how that's going to work. I don't know if it's really going to work out for them or not. Obviously, that's a huge card. People still know the Rampage and, and Vanderly Silva name going back to their, you know, two pride battles and then the uh, matchup in the UFC uh, for the third one. And then, um, obviously, Rory moving up in weight is very interesting against Gegard. Um, this could be a very good technical fight. I hope they both push it enough to make it exciting. Um, and then if Gegard wins, obviously Gegard, you know, Machida beat Gegard before. That sets up that very interesting rematch for Machida's second fight. I think they, I think they should draw him in once. And they could obviously go with some rematches like Phil Davis or more likely probably, um, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank here, um, on the Arizona wrestler. I don't know why I can't think of his name right now. Um, but... He, you know, those guys, especially being in the heavyweight tournament right now, they're, they're, they're too big, okay? Too, too, kind of too big for Machida at, at this point in his career. Um, they could do that for some ratings versus Ryan Bader. Oh, my God. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, you know, but I think you should do something like Kato first or perhaps someone else first. And then versus, for the middleweight championship. And then in the future, if he wants to, to move up, to fight some of these bigger guys at light heavyweight or a catch weight. But Bader's huge. Bader's like 240 pounds, I think. So, you know, that's just asking a lot. Even though Machida knocked him out quickly in the first round before at UFC on Fox 4 that I covered um, for that one I helped, uh, uh, you know, be a sparring partner for. Um, anyway, big news. It'll be interesting to see where uh, Bellator goes with this dozen and if that picks up. Anyway, guys, now on to the main card. Of the McFarlane versus Laura card. We had Juan Archuleta versus Robbie Peralta. Now, Juan Archuleta, they showed it, and this guy came out with his heart rate already up, firing on all cylinders. They monitored him backstage, they had him in the right zone. Obviously, that made a difference. Fighters, for three round fights, stop coming out cold and being lazy asses. You need to get to work right away. We've seen all the split decisions that go the wrong way in a three-round fight. You just can't risk it. You need to get out there and get to work. And that's exactly what Archuleta did. Coming out of the gate, firing right away, aggressive forward pressure, wrestling, flying knees, calf kicks. Calf kicks. Of course, I'm the godfather of calf kicks. Calf kicks right away. Um, just, just very, very exciting. And then the third round, 14 seconds in, bouncing lateral, first to the left, then to the right. He did a fake shot to you right overhand. Beautiful KO with some follow-up machine gun. Brrr, hammer fist. A la Kevin Randleman versus Mirko Krokop. Randleman knocked out Krokop. Wow, that was exciting back then. Uh, rest in peace, Kevin Randleman. And um, Archuleta, man, you got to pay attention to this, dude. 15-fight win streak now. He's working with Joe Daddy Stevenson, TJ Dillashaw, Dwayne Ludwig, Mark Munoz, Cub Swanson, I mean, Swanson and, and TJ are some of the most creative guys around. I mean, TJ is drilling all these shifting combinations, um, switch stances and, and, and blitzes and all that. And Swanson's always been really creative. Uh, I wish he'd go back to the left hook, to the delayed liver kick, to the right-handed delayed right dip kick like he used um, against Poirier going back a bit. But, um, you know, with those guys in his corner and this guy's athletic ability, uh, Juan Archuleta... Start paying attention to that name. You know, obviously 15-fight win streak. Um, the guy's a beast, and uh, you better pay attention to that guy. That's a guy who should be, you know, working his way to a title shot real fast. Next up, Valerie Letourneau versus Christina Williams at flyweight. Um, that first fight, Archuleta was at featherweight, by the way. Letourneau versus Williams at flyweight. Uh, Williams throws lead inside crescent kick with her lead leg, but she is not Anderson Silva. She's underwater. She ain't working at Anderson Silva's speed. She gets knocked down with the right hand because of her troubles uh, in a guard, and they both land strikes. She lands good strikes from her back. Um, Latrina lands good strikes on top. Fairly boring affair. Round 1, Valerie 10-9. Round 2, Valerie 10-9. But honestly, 
she should have been doing way more damage, uh, way more output. She should have way more confidence. Um, her eyes should see more in the, the exchanges, the punch exchanges in the pocket from the very, very slow Williams, who honestly, I hate to bag on fighters, but she should have been developed uh, on the undercards, not on televised main cards versus more experienced fighters. That's been her whole career, is learning on the fly. She's not technically there. She's really not athletically there. Um, and, and I don't want to see a fight that looks honestly as bad as this on a main card. I expect better from Bellator. Um, you know, I know why they did it uh, in case a girl dropped out uh, so they could build up a fight between Valerie. This should have been a showcase for Valerie. Um, and she never pulls the damn trigger. Um, round three, Williams does blitz in with punches and elbows. She, she is tough. She's tough. She looks like a big girl. She obviously hits not sharp, but uh, heavy. Uh, and um, uh, that was good. You know, she's got heart. I'm not saying she doesn't. I'm not saying she can't grow. Um, but that led to a Laterno easy takedown with uh, Kosoto Gari outside leg hook finish into guard. Uh, ref stand up, more bad crossing of the feet and plodding footwork by Williams. Comes from Taekwondo background. Does not have boxing or kickboxing footwork. She's literally crossing her lead foot in front of her back foot instead of pushing off and shuffling. Uh, I can't stand and watch that. I never want to watch that on main card. This should have been a giving fight for the turnout. It wasn't just because Williams is big and has uh, heart. Um, Takedown by Williams in the third ends in a potential triangle choke uh, towards the end. 29-28 unanimous decision for Valérie Letourneau. And, uh, you know, yeah, she won a fight and she's won other fights, but I always want to see more confidence from her. She's not aggressive enough. She doesn't have killer instincts. She needs more of that. Um, maybe she's one of these people that needs a coach to friggin' yell at her, send her to... Uh, a sports performance psychologist that I don't usually believe in, but she had a huge athletic advantage, huge athletic advantage in this fight. It should have been a complete mismatch. I mean, she doesn't exploit it. She's kind of done that in the past. It's like you don't want to coast to a decision victory. You should be finishing people like this. This was, this was set up so you could be on the same card as McFarlane and call her out for a title match. That's what this was supposed to be. You didn't get the script. Your coaches didn't tell you. Um, pulling a little Chael Son in here. But you should have. She frustrates me. Even in the UFC early on, the girl comes in with like her kind of kickboxing credentials and skills, and you know she's faster than she thinks. But even in the pocket, she's like shying away from punches. And the girl doesn't punch sharp. She just kind of has heavy uh, bones, heavy punches. Um, she should have done a lot more. I hate to bag on you, but it's for your own good. If you happen to watch this, don't hate on me in the camp. Talk to her. Look at this. Watch this. Get to a sports psychologist. Do what you got to do. Go hang out with some military guys for a week. Uh, I don't know. Get, get more aggressive. All right, next up, Ryan Couture versus Saeed Awad. This was at a catch weight of 160 pounds. And Couture keeps trying to force the clinch, but overly trying. I mean, he has to against Awad, but, like, it, it's not the proper way. Overly forcing the clinch, trying to avoid the explosiveness in the hands of Saeed Awad. Now, Awad has always had what I call initial acceleration as punches. It was long hooks, and now he's also got good uh, right straight as well, good straight punches. But his long hooks were always snappy, Fedor or, or uh, Vovchanchin like like many Middle Eastern, Eastern European, Russian fighters have. It's because they're not pushing the punch. They're having, bam, explosive initial initial acceleration in that initial phase. That, that white muscle fiber explosiveness you hear uh, other commentators talk about. So, um, man, he just keeps coming in. So he blocked a right body kick and landed a kind of kind of blocked it out here karate style. Boom, instinctively. And throws right hand basically straight down the pipe counter hurting Ryan, and then after that, it was just a huge swarm of punches against the cage. Um, uh, basically, Couture's doing wounded duck, and finally, after a body shot, he crumpled, and, and the ref stopped it uh, appropriately. Uh, Couture was taking a beating at that point. Um, 
I think I met Ryan when he was real young, and he actually backed up something I said a long time ago that I got heat from on a forum, from what I was told privately. So, you know, I wish him well. Um, I think he's actually watched one of my videos based on a combination he threw in the past. Um, but Saeed's really, you know, the guy's always had hands, man. He's got rocks in his hands, um, good initial acceleration on his punches, most don't, and, and he called out for the title shot. He took that opportunity, just like Chael P. Sonnen's always talking about, to do what he's supposed to do. To do like Conor McGregor did, laws of attraction, and make your own future. Take it within yourself. Because if you don't care, nobody else will. Alright, next up, main event. Lima Lee McFarlane versus Alejandra Lara. Now this was a flyweight title fight. Started off with a very bad lateral drop attempt by McFarlane, and she lands in her guard. Immediately she goes to rubber guard with meat hook. People also don't know that. I spent two and a half years under that otherworldly, weirdly named system. And uh, she goes for uh, armbar, and then gets to a regular armbar, and then goes to El Elvis Sinisic position. Yes, I'm going to call that. Why? Because he's the first one to do it in MMA. This is an MMA fight. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, even though I've coached at the same gym and is, you know, shouldn't we give Elvis Sinisek for doing it to Jeremy Horn credit instead of calling it a dead orchard? Yes, I think so. Um, so the Elvis Sinisek position, which is basically a triangle with both arms in. Uh, she's working for that uh, arm bar, kind of overrules, ends up turtling. Um, and then Laura eventually passes that turtle, pushes her on her back, gets the side control. Hard round to score. Uh, I think Big John said it was to McFarlane. Obviously, there was a submission attempt. But, you know, she's on her back, too, and she finished around side mounted. So I kind of I kind of give that one to Laura. All right, round two. If it's Laura, I'm, uh, I apologize. Round two, Laura lands a, a good elbow when Klitsch gets the cage. Really good elbow. McFarlane with the back against her cage now. While her back was caged, she got that, uh, I believe, right under Hulk, turned off the cage, and then used the momentum of the turnaround to go right into the lateral drop. This time, she set it up. This time, she nailed the lateral drop. If you watch my 10 submission grappling highlights, you know I love to nail people with lateral drops. Uh, gets you right in a side control right away, uh, which is exactly where she ended up. Um... Then she goes to three-quarter mount, so her knee, a little bit of her ankles trapped in quarter guard. And uh, eventually Laura gets it back to half guard. And then a nice almost back take by McFarlane. Almost. Almost got there. It wasn't quite back to front. It was kind of um, like the Uka Sasaki, almost like the Uka Sasaki back take from the, the previous weekend's UFC. Uh, another guy I've trained with here, look at uh, spring videos with Uka Sasaki. So it was almost like that sweet back take he did, uh, but she didn't quite get it. Um, let's see, round three, Lara, good jab, left cross. She has the better and far more professional footwork and movement. McFarlane does not look very good on the feet. You shouldn't have any, you know, uh, jujitsu people teaching you uh, striking. I don't know if that's her case, but for a champion, she's not quite there yet. She has the heart, she has some of the jujitsu, she has some of the athletic ability, but um, needs, but Laura had much better footwork and movement. Uh, Laura tries spinning elbow, but gets taken down and, and her back taken uh, because of that. And um, McFarlane, good elbows from Mount, very good elbows, goes for the armbar. Laura eventually bases up to her knees and then she's in the tight armbar, and then she brings one leg over and puts the knee on the mat, one knee over the top to defend, which is good. That, that's totally a legit defense. Your arm's getting cracked, but not enough to tap in a real fight. Uh, and you're working it out, you're jiggling that elbow out. She, they're there for quite a while. And then, like, brain fart, she thought she had to do something. I don't know. Inexplic inexplicably, she, she rolled herself back over on her back, hoping to escape, I guess. And right away... Uh, McFarlane puts her feet on the ground, arches the hips way up to the ceiling, and finishes that armbar. It was already set. It was already there. Game, set, match. Uh, still champion, and still 
McFarlane. Um, she definitely needs to work on her footwork and movement a little bit more, a little bit more on her striking. Um, you know, but, you know, you get in some girl jutsu matches with uh, rubber guard type flexibility. Um, you know, good job to her. Good job to her. Just some stuff to work on. And uh, not, not a bad fight. Not a bad fight at all. Um, so, main card, you know, it was good. Um, except for one person who really doesn't belong there and didn't belong there ever in the first place. You, don't, you shouldn't have your first, second fight on the main card because there's no one else to find. I've been the biggest supporter of women's MMA going back a long time. But, you know, it's time to start holding them up to the same level of technical ability if we're going to put them on main cards and call them champions. Um, or even title contender fights. So, uh, you know, I've supported a long time. I mean, going back to 2002 Hook and Shoot Revolution, I got in a car and my own gas money, paying for my own hotel, just to make sure the women had a little bit of a shout out in Black Bolt's Fight Sport magazine back in the day, back in 2002. So, um, anyway, guys, even if you're trying to build someone, please don't put someone who is obviously C level in something you're trying to, against a B level, trying to hype them as the next A level contender. Um, you know, and it's not fair to the, it's not even fair to the fighter uh, who, who's 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 getting pushed as a as a sack for someone else to fight before they belong there. Um, you know, she hasn't developed it. So, all right, guys, on to the epic one middleweight championship title fight between Ang La Na Song. I'm gonna call him Ang Song. I don't know if that's right. I'm gonna call him Ang Song. Even though it's probably La Na Song or En Song versus Ken Hasegao. Again, guy I've sparred with quite a bit in Tokyo back in the day. And Cha Gong, um, Champ uh, Ong from Myanmar. Um, I've only had one Myanmar girlfriend, so not great at the pronunciations. Versus Southpaw Hasegao. Round one was very close. Uh, Husko was backing up, but landed a nice left cross and a left high kick. Overall, both guys were active. Pretty close first round. One has total fight scoring, which is pretty awesome, um, but they, you know, you still kind of talk like it's round by round, but it's not really round by round. Uh, round two, Hasegawa, much busier with his hands, in fact, too busy. He's obviously fought a lot, a lot of three-round uh, fights and not a lot of, round, not a lot of five-round fights. Hasegawa now warmed up, coming out too aggressively. Um, he is doing a good job with his boxing, better than in the past, um, better with his footwork, uh, being a southpaw, hopping his foot off often to the outside gate, hopping his right lead foot, matching up to the lead foot of Ong here, hopping his right foot off while he throws a right long hook left cross or right uppercut left straight or whatever. Um, he, he did a much better job. He definitely won the second round, and he was busy. But too busy, started to gas himself out. Round number three. Ong tries southpaw a bit the first 10-15 seconds, then goes back, and they start going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Round three is a really crazy round, um, probably something I want to go back and re-watch. They're going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. Ken gets takedown into side control, but Ong scrambles back up. Um, pretty good job being able to scramble back up against Ken, and Ken was looking for the crucifix. Uh, Ken's got me there before. Ken is very, very dangerous if he gets... Side control puts his weight good across his nipples. A judo black belt, long time, especially if he gets crucifix. So starting to get crucifix, it was almost uh, near side underhook, ghost escape, and then turned the other way and spun around. And there was enough sweat and distance, boom, he framed to pop back up. So good get up by the champ. Uh, good elbow on the feet by Ong right after that. And Ken's arms are punched out a bit, and they're dropping. He's gassing. There's too much lactic acid from his. Over uh, over punch output for a middleweight, a big middleweight nowadays, in the second round. He's fought at heavyweight uh, recently. He got really big when he was doing stuff at K1. The last time I saw him at Ryzen, he was pretty pretty darn yoked, bigger than me, and I'm uh, 220 to 230 on any given day. So um, round four, uh, round three was crazy going to the stock exchange. Definitely, guys, you want to watch this fight. Uh, one has it free on Facebook. Not on YouTube, I don't believe. Uh, I checked yesterday, but it's going around on Facebook, so check it out officially. I put I got it on my Facebook page. Round four. Ong sprawls against a bad shot by Ken Asagawa, or and um, you know Ken's obviously gassed. 
and lands two hard knees when they come back up to the clinch. So we're two really good knees. Ken throwing on heart, but he's off balance and gas. He's throwing himself off balance. Uh, on lead right, bang to snap down. And now he does a back take and they scramble to mount, but then they end up scrambling back to the feet. So pretty good scrambles by the guys to get back to their feet. Obviously neither guy wants to be on their back. Ken pushing forward with punches. Ong Song lands a spike elbow twice. Kind of like in between an uppercut elbow and a real spike elbow. He kind of bang, bang came in there with some really uh, good elbows. You don't see that elbow a lot. Uh, it's good to see that. Uh, I think they were both when his back was against the cage. And uh, one time left in round four, Ong hits Kazushi Waza Machida style sweep the to top turtle. I don't know where he learned it. Maybe he learned it on my YouTube channel, guys. Look at Kazushi Waza Machida style sweep video. I've had that out since 2012, I believe, even before I was sparring with Machida. And um, Max Holloway hit that twice recently. Uh, it's so beautiful. It's so energy efficient. Uh, and to get that on a judoka like Ken is, is pretty awesome, uh, especially in the fourth round. So uh, it was really beautiful. We first saw that by Machida versus Nakamura in UFC. So uh, anyway, very, very beautiful to see that uh, old style Shokan uh, Yoda, Oeda, Yoda technique. Um, I was much fresher.